One theory regarding dividend policy and how it should be approached is that of dividend clientels. So what this effectively says is that there are different groups of investors that are looking for certain dividend policies for their own sort of reasons. So let's imagine that we've got a low dividend clientele and a high dividend clientele. So we've got some investors who want low dividend payouts and would instead prefer to mostly get capital gains. And then on the other hand, we have investors who'd like to get paid out high dividends. On the left side here, you would expect to see perhaps US investors, because in the US, Capital gains get preferential tax treatment over ordinary income, which is what dividends get classified as. However, on the other side, you could see Australian investors. Because in Australia, we have dividend imputation, which actually reduces the tax on dividends and makes them preferable to capital gains. At the same time, under high dividend clientels, you could see fund managers. Now, fund managers are investing on behalf of members, and typically they have restrictions on what they can actually pay back. The assets that they hold in the members' names are put into two categories. They've got the principal and income. Now, principal is all the assets they hold in order to generate revenue, and then income is, of course, that revenue being generated. Now, if they hold shares that give dividends, dividends are classified as income, and they can be paid back to the members. However, if they hold on to shares that increase in value and make a capital gain, the capital gain does not actually get classified as income. It's just added on to the value of the principal. So if they took out nothing but shares that didn't pay dividends, but just rose in value, the value of the principal would just get larger and larger. And with the restriction that they're not allowed to pay, the, they're not allowed to sort of sell the principal to pay back members, they'd have nothing to give the members to keep them happy. So they would typically seek out shares that have high dividends. At the same time, you've also got a lot of institutional investors who have tax exemptions. So for a lot of institutional investors, uh, dividend income is completely tax exempt as opposed to capital gains. So for them, it's really no question, high dividend shares are better than low dividend shares. So some would argue that, according to this, it is ultimately fairly clear that high dividends is actually better for tax purposes for most investors in the market. Some would argue based on that, that you should have high dividends in order to cater to this much larger group so that you can increase the demand for your shares, which should drive up the price and increase the value of the firm. What critics say to this, however, is that ultimately that wouldn't really happen because even if you are catering to a much larger group, markets are still fairly efficient and pricing will be based on the value of the firm or the value of the shares according to sort of risk and return characteristics and diversification benefits. So it doesn't matter if you cater to a larger group with the tax treatment, the price should still be set by the market in a fairly efficient manner and it's ultimately not going to matter. It is true that certain investors would prefer some shares over the other, you know, if they're mostly the same except for dividend policy, uh, according to tax treatment. 
but it shouldn't really have much of an impact on the value of the shares. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.